At the Bharat Mobility Show, Tata has on display the Curve. Now this is their upcoming urban SUV with a coupe-like design. Uh, they've shown it time and time again as a concept, as a nearly production finished uh, ready version at uh, the Auto Expo. And here it is again in a bright shade of orangish red uh, at the Bharat Mobility Show. Now this particular version is the diesel, delivers uh, about 115 uh, horsepower and it comes with a 1.5 liter diesel. Now, like everything that Tata has been doing in recent times, the Curve will also have an electric counterpart and uh, that is definitely on the cards as well. So it is a pretty large vehicle. This is the production ready version. So you can see that it is uh, a nice large uh, SUV coupe, sports coupe kind of design going for it. The interior is supposed to be very upmarket a large uh, infotainment screen, all of that. Up front, the design is now uh, synonymous with all of Tata Motors' uh, vehicles, be it uh, the Punch EV, the new Harrier, the new uh, Safari, all of them have this exact same design language going for it. Uh, in my opinion, I find it to be a little too edgy, a little too uh, plasticky as well, uh, from certain angles, uh, doesn't really give uh, me that sense of uh, quality but yeah there are enough takers for it so I'm not really going to complain about those guys uh, from uh, an overall stance point you can see that it's got uh, amazing levels of uh, ground clearance so I don't know if uh, all-wheel drive or 4x4 or any of that is going to be part of the package will this be strictly uh, limited to being an urban uh, machine but uh, Judging by the design, judging by what they've gone, which it looks almost like a buggy. Uh, you know, it would be great if it had uh, 4x4 capability, but I don't think Tata is going to do that. Uh, the Curve will remain uh, a very urban sort of brand. And I think the, that's what they're going for over here. So even at the rear, you can see that the light, you've got this nice light bar that runs across the rear. It's again got that entire chisel look uh, that Tata seems to love right now. Uh, I'm not quite digesting the looks, so forgive me if you uh, disagree with me, uh, that's absolutely fine. But uh, to me, I think it's a little, some parts of it are over the top, some parts of it are very nice. So it is a bit of a mixed bag of emotions when it comes to uh, the curve, but uh, all in all, this is what uh, Tata Motors has lined up next and uh, will hopefully come to the market at some point this year. I uh, can't see too much on the inside from here, but let me see if I could zoom in and give you a bit of a glimpse of what uh, the center console looks like. So there are certain design elements going for it. I think it's got the same uh, steering wheel that you got in the new Nexon now, which lights up and has that screen and all that jing bang going for you. So yeah, those are bits and pieces about the curve that uh, are there. Uh, right now, uh, not too many details revealed. This is an almost production ready model. So that's probably the big takeaway from this video. Uh, do let me know what you think of the curve. Uh, do you like the design? Don't you like the design? Do you think that this is uh, a great direction that Tata Motors is going in? So all of that, just leave me a comment behind and I will get back to you. I'd love to hear what you have to say uh, about this uh, vehicle as well. So do write in and I look forward to hearing from you. I pointed to you how you've got a two-wheeler integrated into a three-wheeler design over here. And now we're going to pull out the bike so that you can see just how it pops out and makes life quite uh, easy for everyone. So in a bit, I've got the guys from Hero helping out. And uh, this is the vehicle in its uh, three-wheeler guys with the windscreen down. Now you pop open the windscreen. Okay, the seat has already been lifted in there and over on the side over there, there's a button that you press that uh, I'm guessing lowers the wheel and allows you to finally pull out the bike. So let's take a look at how this is going to happen now, uh, any moment now. So you see the body dropping a bit, the body is coming down and uh, with that, it's now in its part pose and it frees up the bike 
which you can then pull out. So obviously being a very interesting working concept, there, there is a lot going for it. And uh, so the scooter comes out, uh, the rear wheel is still uh, retracted and uh, I think it's just a small little bit of effort and a small button push and you can see the scooter rising up and leveling out and now you have your two-wheeler. So that is how this converts from a three-wheeler into a two-wheeler and a very neat looking two-wheeler at that. So the Surge definitely has a lot going for it and uh, I can see this application finding a lot of takers. I'm quite sure there are a lot of people who are going to comment on this video and ask about it saying that when is this coming to market? Is this even going to come to the market? Right now the answer is I don't know but it looks like a really serious working model and uh, hopefully it does come to market. I think uh, the rickshaw business will take on a whole new turn with this. So that's it. Now you've got uh, the body over there. That's the little ramp that the wheel rolls into and locks into place and allows it to convert into a three-wheeler. Now we're going to pivot over to what lies underneath the skin and makes all of this possible. So when you come here, you can see that the Surge is a battery electric vehicle. Now this is the scooter bit of it. Uh, it's got its own uh, batteries over here and as you can see like I mentioned the rear wheel locks into place and is retracted so this does not stay on the ground comes up and locks into place and it is now part of a larger PEV setup so the main frame houses uh, its own batteries so you can see you got a battery pack on this side you got a battery pack on that side You've, it's got its own motor integrator over here and then you've got your unit over here and this skateboard is what makes this entire thing possible so the surge is a very innovative idea i think it really takes things to a whole new level that is the platform of it that allows it to be an integrated two-wheeler and three-wheeler and convert uh, with the simple touch of a couple of buttons. I think uh, when it comes to innovation and stuff that I've seen in recent times, this one is one of the most finest uh, examples of Indian innovation and what we can do to give you uh, both applications. It is quite a fantastic touch and uh, keep the name Surge in mind. Hopefully, Hero brings it out at some point. This right here is the Skoda Iñak and from the get-go, the first thing I want to tell you about it is that it is coming to India. It is coming later this year. It will launch and it is Skoda's first fully electric offering for the country. So as you can see, it's got uh, all the Skoda design elements going for it. Obviously more pronounced than what we see on their current lineup, but it is a striking looking machine. So up front you've got uh, the Skoda crystal lighting, you've got the nice uh, DRL running over there. Very edgy, very sharp contour lines that really bring out uh, the ENIAC's uh, stance and poise. Uh, even the grille has been done in an element that we've not seen on any other car and I'm sure it lights up as well. But very cool, very crystal-like and I mean crystal is uh, a Skoda design element so you can see that they brought it into their grill as well. So up front a very bold stance, it is a striking looking machine and the design elements really uh, give you a nice pronounced look and feel. So from the side it is a very large SUV so what we're looking at is a pretty solid size. If I had to compare it to an existing vehicle I would say that this is along the same size as a Tiguan Allspace or like a Kodiak. So it is about that size, it's huge, it's a five-seater and it is all electric as well. Right now, since it is going to be launching in India, we've not got the Indian specifications just yet and uh, Skoda is a little tight-lipped about uh, range and stuff like that, but I would guess a vehicle this size is going to be giving you uh, a range that is easily 500 plus on a single charge. It's going to come with fast charging options and the works. So we're talking about a big electric motor, nice powerful battery pack on board that will allow it uh, to deliver that level of convenience and comfort as well as uh, range 
which is all important in today's day and age. It rides on nice large 235-55R19 rims. Again, the rim design has been done uh, to uh, be more aerodynamic, something that we're seeing with a lot of EVs now, that they're nice and flat, help uh, streamline that airflow over the body. All of that is, again, uh, something that really stands out about it. So, like I said, a nice big vehicle. You do get uh, ample luggage space at the back. The car is locked. We can't quite uh, get in there, but a quick peep will give you a sense of understanding about space as well. So, so if you're looking at the cabin, uh, you can see that uh, ample leg space, a flat floor, rear AC vents over there, and a very upmarket layout to uh, the entire driver display and everything that you get on board. I'm just going to make my way around to the back and uh, show you this angle as well. So again, that typical uh, Skoda crystalline uh, design team carries over. The lights at the rear also look rather striking. I mean, just those sharp, edgy design elements are really uh, something that gives the ENIAC a uh, persona of its own. And you can really see the size from here as well. So a large SUV, all electric, uh, kitted out with uh, a ton of features, comfort, all of that is top notch. Uh, being part of the Volkswagen Group, uh, Skoda is very committed to safety, so I wouldn't, uh, uh, you know, uh, deny the fact that uh, it's going to have top notch safety elements on board. And I'm guessing that uh, ADAS is also going to be a part of the package as well. Of course, we will get to know more when Skoda eventually launches this in India later this year. But uh, for now, I'm going to leave you with the fact that it is coming to India. It is launching this year. So keep your eyes peeled if you're looking for a nice ESUV that uh, looks as striking as this. If you've got any further questions, uh, feel free to drop me a comment. It is uh, my promise that I answer every comment that comes in on the Motorskives channel. So if you do have a question about the ENIAC and you want to know more about it, feel free to write in and I will get back to you. So this right here is the concept EQG. Yes, from Mercedes-Benz. And what we're looking at is the electric version of the G-Wagon. So from a design perspective, from all the key details that make the G-Wagon a G-Wagon, uh, the EQG sports all of that. The nice flat uh, bonnet, you know, you've got uh, these beautiful fenders, the entire door style, all of that, the glass house, the glass house ratio to the body, everything about it, including capability, has been incorporated to sort of take the G-Wagon into a new era, which is bold and electric. Now, this is not the production version. This is the concept EQG, and it has been brought to India for the first time and is being showcased here at the Bharat Mobility Show. And as you can see that it's got a nice, beautiful, bold grill, lights up really nice. In fact, even the logo has this sort of radiant look to it. The lights, everything is a standout feature with this vehicle. Uh, when it comes to the tires, we're looking at massive uh, 21 inch uh, tires. Even the alloy design is just so striking and cutting edge. This character line that you see running down the body, this actually lights up. It's got lights in there. So that lights up as well. And you've got your typical G-Class element right there as well. Up top on uh, this neat carrier, you've got what is a light over here too. And this is also something that if you do a lot of off-roading, you need that light bar on top. So Mercedes has incorporated it into the design over here to give you something that stand out and cutting edge. So a lot in terms of quality, a lot in terms of giving you a vehicle that is just so outlandish, something that you want so bad. And in fact, there's a little bit of goodies back here in this box as well. So this is the concept uh, EQG and it is a striking looking vehicle. And now what I'm going to show you is what you get inside. So getting inside, you can see that it has been done up in absolute splendor. I mean, this is luxury at its very best. Contoured seats just looks outstanding. Obviously, the concept version has it done in white. 
you've got a dual digital screen uh, set up over here again for the driver information cluster as well as uh, your infotainment system over here we're talking about top-notch mercedes-benz fit and finish in a vehicle that is extremely capable and you can see that the design the interior the cabin is just pure indulgence so being an electric version of the g and being a mercedes means that you do get all the frills uh, that you would expect on board with a mercedes including the burmester uh, surround sound system there's ample trunk space as well but uh, coming back to the cabin you know what we're looking at over here is the way that things are changing the way that mercedes is sort of moving forward with digitization within all their vehicles and uh, like i mentioned it is very very plush but it is also a g-wagon which means that you do get 4x4 mode so you've got a whole bunch of selections over here to switch between uh, the drive modes that you want and being electric has allowed Mercedes-Benz to actually really push boundaries when it comes to 4x4 capability so this runs four motors so it's got a motor on every single wheel and what this has allowed uh, is for a ton of flexibility it will deal with the off-roading very easily it will go it will climb a mountain if you wanted to but it also does something cool called a g-turn because all four wheels can turn and it can literally do a tank turn so if it's positioned like this right in this spot it can actually turn around and it would have its back towards me there are videos of that out on the internet you just have to look for the g-turn or the tank turn of the eqg and you will see what i'm talking about and the good thing is that the production version of this is definitely coming to India. So uh, while this is a concept, it's near production and the production version will launch in India. We're hoping by the end of this year, but it could be early next year as well. On that note, I hope you enjoyed this little showcase of the concept EQG. Do drop me a line, uh, write in to me, drop a comment. And if you have any further questions about this uh, concept, I'd be more than happy to answer those. When it comes to luxury travel and you're looking at a brilliant bus for the purpose, look no further than this one. This is the Volvo 9600 Executive Coach. A stunning looking bus. I mean, even the finish to the exterior is top notch upmarket. It looks futuristic. You've got these neat DRLs in the lights. Everything about it is rather uh, upmarket and both of a quality that you can only find on a Volvo. So it is a massive, massive bus. I'm just gonna back up a bit and you can see that it's huge. It's a dual axle setup and this is their executive coach. Now, while the outside looks absolutely brilliant, where things are changing is on the inside. So I'm gonna show you everything about this bus. I'm gonna take a walkthrough tour of what's in there and uh, that's really what this bus is all about so let's get going all right so let's get inside and see what this executive coach is all about well starting with what the driver gets he's got a neat instrument cluster a lot of buttons for controls a very nice interface over here again looks top notch the materials also look top notch and they've done a fantastic job of fit and finish right here. So you come up a flight of stairs, nicely lit as you can see with this blue light, but the cabin is what you would find in an airline. So it is business class seating, as you can see over here, and uh, you get a nice little bay. I'm just gonna sit down and show you what it's like to be in one of these seats. So you've got a screen that you can move out in front of you, ample leg room, so you can really stretch out if you want. You've got your bottle holders, your magazine holders, everything over there, nicely lit. And you've got these roll up curtains as well. So nice big windows, really nice in terms of fit and finish. And it is a stunning looking cabin. So like I said, very airline inspired. So you've got a luggage rack up here for your small bags. Uh, nice AC vents again very airline like and it is these 
seats that really give you uh, that sense of space and that executive class feel. So you can stretch out if you want. Uh, the seats have a nice support that comes out. You can actually recline it down, become like a bed. You've got controls mounted in uh, the handle right there. And all of this works really well to give you uh, a ton of uh, space on board. It is very luxurious looking. It is the ultimate uh, travel bus. So I really hope to see this on uh, these uh, intercity uh, routes. Uh, right now sleepers are uh, what a lot of uh, operators use but an executive coach like this would just make so much sense for runs like uh, you know the overnight buses that I see uh, running in different parts of the country and uh, it would just be so nice to have an additional option that is safer as well because you also get uh, seat belts integrated with every seat and that is something that sleeper buses uh, are notoriously missing uh, this kind of comfort, this kind of uh, executive coach would really make a lot of sense on these intercity routes and I can just see a lot of people uh, really wanting something like this. There are tour operators out there who have uh, done a lot in terms of innovation and I really feel that uh, this is something that they should consider as a product for uh, their fleet. An executive coach that's huge. It offers uh, enough seating uh, you know, to make it a very comfortable sort of airline-like experience. I mean, I can just imagine someone even having service running up and down the uh, alley over here as people are seated in their nice uh, confined spaces and have that privacy curtain for their benefit. So overall, really neat, really upmarket, something top-notch. That's my buddy there, Yogi is all stretched out so you can see the level of comfort that you get isn't that so <laughs> <laughs> and for this showstopper we also have what I'm guessing is a loop built in so like I said an executive coach that is totally inspired by uh, an airline sort of uh, thing and you've got a small galley in the back for a kitchen so imagine doing long distance travel on this you can have your coffee you've got a microwave you can store away stuff over here there's a washroom integrated right over here small like i said airline like but again something that is functional spacious and usable i like this rear hatch as well so i'm just gonna exit and i'm gonna let you know that we've just spent a walk through this entire bus and it is a striking uh, executive coach. I really hope fleet operators look at uh, adding something like this to uh, what they do because it would really be something tremendous and amazing to have on Indian roads. So that there folks is the executive coach from uh, Volvo. A stunning bus, upmarket, premium, airline-like, inspired by all the good things in life and you would really enjoy a drive in this. So if you have any further questions, do get in touch, do write in. It is my job at Motoscribes to answer every single comment that comes in on the channel. So if you want to know more about this bus, do write in and I will get back to you. This over here is the Hero Forever. Yes, it is a commemorative bike that is coming out, a commemorative edition, and it draws its inspiration from the charisma. So as you can see, it is very track oriented or race oriented. The pedigree shows through. At the rear, you've got the acrophobic exhaust, uh, a nice uh, frame that's been done up in this metal sheen uh, that stands out. You've got the uh, Olins right there. And even the rear cowl has been done up, uh, keeping that sporty touch and a nice carbon fiber finish over here as well. Done with a single seat and you've got the Charisma badge on the tank. This is a bike that is paying homage to what uh, Hero Motor stands for. So even when you look at it up front, you know, it's got that nice street uh, naked look, got a brilliant stance. And uh, the reason that this has been rolled out is that uh, it is celebrating uh, a lot. It's a commemorative collector's edition motorcycle that is all about celebrating uh, Hero's legacy in India. Uh, this bike will be limited to just a hundred units 
and uh, the first units will come out on July 1st which uh, coincides with the birth anniversary of Dr. Bridge Mohan Lal Munjal who was uh, the hero's founder and chairman emeritus. Uh, so it marks his journey uh, as well uh, and it is a bike that takes uh, the hero legacy so to speak in a very bold direction. You know everything about it is about being sporty, about being right up there, about showing their prowess in building world-class motorcycles and I think that this really apart from being just a commemorative edition it is also a strikingly great uh, showcase of their engineering prowess. So Hero definitely has a lot going for it. And uh, you know, just take a look at the bike. Looks absolutely stunning. Everything about it screams quality. The fit and finish is outstanding. I like this alpine gray and uh, carbon fiber sort of play with colors. And the red, of course, is something special. So. Uh, the engine is uh, a 210cc uh, liquid-cooled engine and uh, that's what it comes with and uh, you've also got these diamond cut uh, alloy wheels which is again another little bit of uh, addition over there this red little uh, bit sort of just accentuates uh, what this bike is all about and in all honesty you're looking at something that really stands out looks brilliant has that amazing uh, fit and finish and is uh, sort of uh, meant for the track so even up here you can see you've got that uh, TFT uh, speedometer you've got uh, adjustable foot pegs you know these are again some really nice uh, highlights that you do get uh, with the the Hero Forever Collector's Edition bike and last but not least you've got the uh, upside down uh, front forks again uh, pointing towards uh, that whole inspiration of performance, pedigree and uh, sheer uh, on-road dynamics. It is a wonderful looking machine, uh, very striking and a uh, hundred lucky people will get to have this in their garage. So uh, I'm sure there'll be more news on that later. But for now, this video is all about checking this bike out. And as you can see, Hero does definitely have a trick up their sleeve.